Swift could have decided to create a single void star pointer type and just been done with it. It didn't. Even though Swift can't provide you with the guarantees it does normally, the unsafe API nudges you to the correct usage. In each release, Swift has been refining the ergonomics of the unsafe APIs to be better. In this demo, we'll look at using the various pointer types in Swift. All of these types begin with the prefix unsafe, so it is obvious you are entering the world of unsafeties. Pointers that change memory are marked with mutable. Pointers that refer to bytes are named raw, and pointers that conform to sequences and collections are called buffers. In the case you are referring to a type, the pointer type has an associated type called pointee. If you are dealing with non-trivial types, you must use a typed pointer. Raw pointers don't cut it. Swift requires that memory be bound to a type before you use it, and memory must always be bound to exactly one type before you use it. While you can change the binding of trivial types, which is sometimes referred to as type punning, it can only be one type at a time. Open the Starter Playground. This playground consists of several pages. Each demonstrates a particular concept. Let's start with the most basic type, raw pointer. Go to the first page called raw pointer. We will use raw pointer to create space for two integers. It is mutable because we are going to write to it. It is raw because it refers to raw bytes. The important point is that byte count uses stride instead of size multiplied by count. They turn out to be the same in this case, but using stride is always correct. The memory is unmanaged, so you will need to remember to deallocate it. A good trick, if you know you're going to be finished with it when it goes out of scope, is to use a defer block. OK, let's write to it. Write 4095, which is 12 bits all on. It is possible to increment the pointer. Pointer types conform to the stridable protocol we saw earlier with collection indices. Advance the pointer and store the bytes of the number 6. Here, it is important to advance by stride bytes, not size. This is why it is actually named stride. We need this value when we are walking through the array. If you wanted to, you can also write it this way. Both return a new pointer advanced by the stride bytes that you can then store 6 to. You can also load integers back through raw pointers. Again, you can also write the second line this way. Let's execute to check our work. You can see it returning the proper numbers. You need to specify the type with int.self that you want to load back as. This is binding the type. We can use raw buffer pointer to loop through the bytes easily. You create the buffer pointer by specifying the start pointer and a byte count. This lets you loop over the bytes individually. You can see our 12 bits in there. 255 is 8 bits on, 15 is 4 bits on for a total of 12. You can also see the bytes being written to are in little Indian order. Now let's look at typed pointers. Switch to the type pointer playground page. To allocate a typed pointer of ints, just do this. This allocates the memory, but doesn't initialize it. You will need to do that in a separate step. You initialized everything to zero. Remember to deallocate or you will have a leak. In this case, you deinitialized and deallocated. While with a trivial type such as int, you can get away without doing it, you are supposed to, and it is a good habit to get into. Sometimes it really matters, especially with a non-trivial type. 
With the typed pointer, storing and loading are easier than raw pointer. Also, you can use Stridable's plus operator. Loading is just as easy. You can use a buffer pointer to loop over the collection. The buffer pointer can use the associated type of the pointee. The nice thing about typed pointers is that you can start thinking in terms of type units rather than strides of bytes. Switch to the next playground, convert raw to typed. You see some raw bytes being allocated and the defer deallocate block as before. To create a typed pointer, use the bind memory method. You will need, of course, to initialize memory. You also need to remember to deinitialize, but remember not to deallocate it. That is the job of the raw pointer. Of course, you can use this just as before. Let's look at how to get bytes of an existing model. Switch to the next playground page, Getting Bytes. First, let's get the bytes of sample struct. The closure gets an argument of unsafe buffer pointer to the bytes. You should use this only inside the closure. It rebinds the memory to a uint8 inside of this block. You shouldn't let this buffer pointer escape from the block. However, you can compute things and return them. To illustrate this, let's compute the checksum of the struct. Finally, let's look at binding memory a little bit more closely. Open the page binding. You see raw memory being created and then creating typed pointer one to it. What if you want to look at the chunk of memory as a bunch of bools? You could bind it like this. You could do this, and while this will work, it's not the best way you could do it. This is because it might be tempting to refer back to typed pointer 1 and access the memory through it. This would be undefined behavior. Memory can only be bound to one type at a time. A better way to do this would be with the method with memory rebound. This explicitly rebinds the memory. You can use the rebound memory inside the block. When it exits, the memory is once again bound to uint 16s.